Hi, my name is Susan Miranda, and I am a local Twin Cities, Minnesota freelancer, and I'm here as a guest musician on behalf of McPhail to share the Allstate Etudes with you and some tips and tricks on how to kind of go about working through them. So first I want you to take a look at this etude. Um, it's a little interesting because there's two different sections. I will be working through uh, the B section today. It's, that's a little bit trickier uh, rhythmically. And so if you choose to do the A section, that's just fine. Uh, look at the first and the third section, both allegro sections. Those are both in D minor, you'll see there's one flat. It's not F major, it's actually D minor. And then the middle section is in D major. So those are some things to kind of take uh, into consideration when working on this etude. So we will look at the Allegro section, the D minor section, and talk a little bit about some of the articulations. When you're uh, working with maybe a faster, more technical etude, you wanna be very diligent about using accents and staccatos um, and sometimes a combination of the two properly. So let's take a look. Let's see. Uh, the way that they've numbered these is the pickup measure is measure one. So we're gonna look at measure two and measure four and six and then seven, nine, 10 and 11. So in that first section, all of those have an accent on the downbeat. So you wanna take into account the measures that do not. So I will play just the first mm, four and a half measures for you. Now, did you notice on measure three, I, I gave a very soft C sharp to make it quite obvious that there is no accent. And um, I even mark something in my part. I mark a little, it's almost like a U without the tail. Um, so a little tiny U and that, to me means lift the sound um, or don't kind of hit it hard. So whatever marking is best for you, sometimes a little squiggly line for extra vibrato or, or you know vibrancy rather than that accented punch. So now let's talk about how to create those accents. There's a number of ways to create an accent on the oboe, one of which is using your tongue on the reed right? So that, I didn't do anything with my breast support. All I did here is kind of bring my tongue back with already blowing against the reed with my tongue on the reed. The second way to create an accent is using your diaphragm, your support. So I'll do that and not try to do the tongue one. So do you hear how there's not as sharp of an accented sound? So with these accents, I am kind of doing a combination of the two. Can you hear that? There's a little bit of a push, but there's also kind of a stark tongue sound at the beginning. Um, and that goes for both D major sections. Uh, all the way through section B, and then, oh my gosh, look at measure 49. There is a, an accent and a staccato. So what that means is we should do both, like pretty heavily, right? So I will start at 47. And you can almost physically see me move. So I'm ending each note with a tongue, starting it with a tongue and using my diaphragm to accent. So those are some of the really important articulations throughout the piece. Let's take a look at some of the dynamics. Now, when I look at etudes, um, obviously we wanna look at the key signature, right? We wanna look and see what kind of accidentals are throughout. Um, and then we want to take a look at some of the extra things. And one of those is dynamics. So we're gonna start mezzo piano, and then there's a crescendo, 
into six mezzo forte. So there's quite a few dynamics. The crescendo from measure eight into nine goes um, from mezzo forte to forte. So you're going to want to try to be very specific and grow as much as you can in those sections that have those crescendos. And pay attention, something about um, composers that compose music nowadays rather than back when that maybe things have kind of gone through publishers and we don't exactly know what the composers did. This composer, Brad Edwards, has been very specific. And even if you look at the difference between measure four and measure eight, which 16th note does that crescendo begin on? Well, in measure four, it begins on the first one. And in measure eight, it actually begins on the second one. So be very specific when you kind of work through these. If you look at measure 43, it doesn't begin until the sixth 16th note. So think about that as you're preparing and working through these etudes and thinking about your dynamics. Um, the final thing I want to talk about in this, uh, the D minor section, the Allegro section, is the um, grace notes. So in measure four, you've got a grace note. You've got, let's see, measure 47, 48. I think that these should be on the beat. You have options, right? You can go, but uh, or you can go, right? So I would make them exactly on the beat. So when you're using your metronome, start exactly when you hear the click. So let me just give you an example of that. Here's my metronome. I'm going to start at measure three. Does that make sense? Try it one more time. So right when you hear that, click. All right, let's take a look at the D major section. So oftentimes when you are giving, given etudes, you get the option of both playing a technical etude and a more lyrical etude. So in this piece, Mr. Edwards has actually combined the two. So you only have to play one etude, but it has all of the things in it. So this D major section is, let's see, lisseso tempo, which means in the same tempo as before. So we haven't slowed down, but the way that he's written the meter and removed the 16th notes kind of makes it feel a little slower. And then cantabile is singing. So you get to be more lyrical um, and maybe even use more expression. So here, the dynamics are a lot different. Um, you have what I'm sure your band director calls hairpins or the crescendo decrescendo, uh, rather than just the crescendo kind of moving somewhere. So make sure that you pay attention to, you know, coming up but then coming back down. And the dynamics um, kind of tear throughout and make sure in measure 19 and 20, it looks like in the entire etude, that is the only section that you're playing piano. So even though the, they're staccatos, really try to keep that dynamic down. Another thing that I noticed in that specific section that was a little bit tricky is keeping those dotted quarter notes long enough. For some reason, I always wanted to cut them short. So try to keep playing through. But uh, let's see, I'll just play it for you. I'll start at measure 18. And that leads me to my final thought about this middle section. Um, there's a retard there. And that means to kind of pull back and just let it kind of um, you know, similar to the end of this beautiful fermata. And the fermata actually gives you an opportunity to kind of remind yourself, where's that tempo? You know, where's my quarter note supposed to be? So you can start right at measure 22 uh, with those 16th notes. So in my brain, as I'm retarding and playing that fermata, 
my my kind of internal pulse is going da 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 Does that make sense? So use that opportunity, even though you're still really trying to be gorgeous and beautiful, get that tempo back in your brain. Um, and the final, final thing of the entire piece, there's no retard at the very end of it, is there? Um, but what I think is just uh, appropriate there would be placing that very last note. And what I mean is just waiting a tiny bit to play that D. So I wanna give you um, an example of that. And that just kind of completes the piece without um, messing too much with the etude. A lot of times you wanna really be very strict when you're playing an etude. So here is the 2020 Allstate Etude excerpt. Thank you so much for listening and I hope that this helps you in your audition.